in their first public play in front of a crowd. Here's Nate Carter, the returning starting running back, breaks out for a touchdown. The top three weapons on display right away for the Spartans. offense they got some yesterday Rico does Nate Carter look like a different player to you and if so why well Jack he looks like a player that's not injured right now that was the only yeah. thing is Nate would look great and then he would get, get some like like a little bug going on and he wasn't in the lineup yeah. I think once people realize he's not Kenneth Walker the third you right. appreciate him a little bit more no one's ever going to be K9, but I do like what Nate Carter brings Tom, I know you like to keep your friends close and your enemies closer. <laughs> what did you learn from a scrimmage with big plays on offense and defense? You know, it's like I got home uh, from Ann Arbor and I turned on the TV. I got myself a pizza. At 5 o'clock, I sat down and uh, watched the back half of the, of the scrimmage. I got to see the whole thing. It was it was great. Uh, you know, I what Michigan's obviously Nate Carter and, and Marsh and, 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 and Childs. I mean, you, you, you got playmakers. It's the offensive line, though, I think it's going to be the issue. And there's, you know, are they going to be able to deliver? It's been a weakness. And it's, yeah. if you have a great offensive line, you're, you're going to be in every game, in my opinion. It's like having a great defensive line. And that's what would concern me. And I talked to my podcast partner, Kerry Keaton, who – the former <laughs> lineman, Michigan State, he's looking at all the hand placement was bad. The footwork was bad. Yeah. And I, yeah. I don't know if that's Kerry just being, you know, being, you know, just being picky about things. But I, I, I think that could be an issue for Michigan State. Yeah. Rico, uh, going back to 1966, I can't remember MSU having a more exciting double threat at quarterback than Childs and a more accomplished backup than Tommy Schuster. What does that mean besides I'm old? <laughs> Jack, I think it means that, you know, Michigan State finally has a, a quarterback that can actually lead them and, and take them for, a, you know, a nice little ride and do it over some years. You know, it's yeah. been it's been a long time since they had somebody who can consistently just go out there and win games. I mean, you look back, Connor Cook looks a lot better each year because – Dude only lost like six games under his MSU career. So now you've got that dual threat quarterback that everybody covets in college football, Nate Childs. Rico, a heralded freshman wideout, Nick Marsh, flashed big plate potential on this TD catch and run and a couple of other plays. What's a reasonable first year expectation? You know what, Jack? I think a reasonable first year expectation is he will be in that top four rotation of receivers. I think he will become that big body receiver that you can go up and just, I mean, he calls himself Megatron. Hopefully he could live up to that expectation. That's him, not me calling him that. Yeah. But I do think that he's gonna see the field a lot. He's gonna be in the rotation. And, and really, I think if the game is on the line in the final two minutes, he's gonna be one of those guys out on the field for MSU. All right, Rico, coming off a four and eight disaster. How many games can Jonathan Smith's first MSU team win? And where do you see him getting W's? Jack, you look at that schedule and, and you hope that they could at least walk away with six wins. I mean, that Vegas has them at five and a half wins. You look at Florida Atlantic, um, you know, they got Prairie View. They also got that the back end of the schedule is also going to be games that they can win. Now, can they yeah. sneak and win a game in the middle between Iowa, Michigan? Because I don't see them beating Oregon or Ohio State. 